Good evening and welcome to Foxcroft Academy where this evening we've got a girls class B matchup between the Caribou Vikings and the Foxcroft Academy Ponies. My name is Chris Lesner. I'm joined by Mark Calman who's doing the commentary with me. He's also producing this one. We have Joe Nelson on the camera for us today. And uh, Mark, uh, really a, kind of a big game here, especially if you're Foxcroft here in this girls matchup. Certainly is, Chris. Um, you know, again, they got a they broke their four-game losing streak uh, last game. A, a big win over John Babs, a close game. Pulled it out of the end, a game you saw here on Eastern Maine Sports Media. You know, tonight they could build on that. And they got another, um, what, on paper, a winnable game coming up on Tuesday. They would love to get this one. There's a lot of heel points on the line. Caribou, uh, one of the top teams in Class B. Um, and a lot of heel points come with, uh, you know, a, a game against them. Yeah, and we're going to get a chance to see one of the, what we think, one of the top players in the state in Caribou in uh, Madeline Depre. Yeah, certainly she's uh, she's as good as you get. Her Grace Jaffrey probably right there is you know Evans for Old Town right there is uh, you know the best players in uh, Class B. It's always good when you get to see a player like that. Uh, but honestly, when you've got a player like that, the other team is focused on stopping that player. And and you know they got we talked to uh, Coach Brown um, earlier. You know they you know they've seen a lot of junk defenses. Uh, you know because. That's what happens when you get a stop player like that. They've got to they've got to learn to kind of deal with those defenses. Um, as she said, it's still kind of early in the year, but it's getting so it's not early, Chris. It's there, this is their eighth game of the year, so they're almost halfway through the season. So um, you know they got to learn to adjust, and other teams are going to keep focusing on her. Yeah, and we again we spoke to Coach Brown pregame, and uh, she mentioned that um, they're going to be without one of their usual starters today, and Ainsley Karen, I believe it was that they're going to be without in the starting lineup. So we'll get more into this one uh, as we go on with our Eastern Maine Sports Media pregame show. Uh, right now we're going to let you see some of our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back with you here at Foxcroft Academy. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91. Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Brothers Meats is a family owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky. That is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Rowles Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Looking to keep your home safe and your lights on? Ideal Energy Solutions is fully licensed and insured to install new Generac generators for your home or business. We proudly handle all of your energy needs, from electrical work to HVAC and heat pumps. Our team is passionate about serving our local community, keeping our valued customers safe. Find us on Facebook or call Ideal Energy Solutions at 207-270-0242 for Maine's Ideal Service busy with places to go things to do people to see let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services bill pay Apple pay mobile deposit and more we're as close as your phone 
Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. My name is Rick Ames, and now we have an office in Dexter, which is what we consider our hometown now. We still have our office in Lincoln, and we're, we're loving that. Looking forward to helping you naturally feel and be your very best. Welcome back here to Foxcroft Academy as we get ready for a girls matchup between the Foxcroft Academy Ponies and the Caribou, Caribou Vikings. As you saw, some of our sponsors, I want to tell you about a few more that make these broadcasts free and available to everybody at home. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman. Covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast direction, to modular home and communications equipment called 977-BEAR today. Maine Mapping Company provides all your land surveying and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter. Maine Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as construction survey services statewide. Visit us at www.mainemappingco.com or check our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. Owned and operated in Milo, McSorley Plumbing offers a variety of services to residential and commercial customers, new construction and remodels, open and closing of seasonal camps and cottages, Pump service and water treatments. McSorley Plumbing has always been a proud sponsor of youth high school sports. Eli's Market, located at 54 Water Street in Guilford, offers full, office full service meat, produce, and deli departments. Eli's also offers additional services, such as propane, rug doctor rentals, ice, and more. For more information, go on to their website at elismarkets.com. So we want to thank all the sponsors for making these broadcasts free and available to everybody at home. and. Uh, now we're, let's start dissecting this one, Mark. Um, Caribou comes in four and three. Foxcroft one and four. Again, big big game for the ponies. Uh, heel heel points wise. Certainly is. I mean, they come in 13th, but oh, 11 teams make the tournament. So one big win could lift you right up. I mean, there's, you know, just figuring out um, unofficially if they win this game, they could move from 13th to seventh. You know, just like that. You're just like that. You're in a, a spot with, where you get a home prelim if you're if you're in that spot. Easier said than done. This is a tough caribou team. But that's just an example of how quick things could change in the standards. And again, with Levin making it, you know, they just need one or two big, big, win, big heel point wins to get up there. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at uh, caribou, we already talked about Madeline uh, Depre, the junior, averaging 17 points a game, 8.3 rebounds per game. Those both second in the Big East. A um, couple other players that might want to watch out for Brianna Levesque. 3.6 3 steals per contest. They got a couple other nice pieces as well that have helped the Vikings uh, jump out to a 4-3 and three record so far. Over on the Foxcroft side, maybe talk, maybe Mark talk about um, Hallie Page and talk about the, uh, you know, Madison Kimball coming back, which has been huge. Yeah, she um, got injured in the uh, opener and they lost to uh, Washington Academy. Um, she's a key player. She's actually starting tonight. Um, she didn't start the other night. She came off a bench and was a big contributor. Um, if you saw that game against John Babs, but, um, you know, she's a key part of this team. Um, you know, she can kind of, you know, generate a lot of energy. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a key point for uh, Levi Ladd's team to, to have her back. Um, but, yeah, Hall Hallie Page, she's definitely a, a big, you know, scorer. And she's defensively, um, she's tough. As is Sam Austin for it. And um, Allie Smith and uh, Kirsten Newt will also get the start tonight. Um, the other day, um, Addie Day, a sophomore, got a start. But she'll come off the bench, um, you know, to get some minutes as will uh, – Asna Coughlin and uh, Payson Hall will get some minutes. And Allie, Allie Cook, a freshman, somebody we saw in the, um, the JV game, she, she'll get some key minutes all, also for, for the Ponies as um, they come in averaging. They're you know, kind of misleading these stats. They're, only, they're averaging 32.2 points a game and averaging 56.4. But they played an Ellsworth team, a dominant Ellsworth team, where that kind of skewed, skewed those stats a little bit. But, um, you know, they, they played well last game. They're looking to build on that. And um, go into next week against, uh, you know, uh, Herman Tuesday game you'll see here on East Main Sports Media. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, I, I think we both agree that the Ellsworth and uh, 
old towns of the world are going to make a lot of teams look bad this year, and uh, and uh, that's just uh, what's been going on early part of the season. They've been they've been really dominant teams in the uh, in the Class B rankings, and actually they match up in Old Town actually on Wednesday night, so that ought to be definitely interesting to see. I did notice, Mark, too, that Foxcroft, when I was looking at some of their stats, um, they have three or four players that average rated between five and five and a half, six points a game. Um, so they kind of really spread it around, but I think we would agree um, shutting down or trying to shut down that will hit in Depre, easier said than done. She had 37 points in their 23-point win at Washington Academy last time out. Yeah, and I actually watched um, tape of that this morning a little bit, and yeah, she was, well, she was hitting them from everywhere. Um, you know, but I think as good as a shooter as she is, I think Foscroft, if she's going to hit shots from that long, you know, okay, you beat us, you know. But, you know, I, I think they're going to try to, you know, for them, try to stop her from getting the easy ba- buckets. And, and that's, you know, but again, she's so dynamic. She can create her own baskets. Um, she's, um, you know, again, one of the best players in, in Class B and one of the best players in the whole state. So um, be interested to see her. One thing, um, you know, talking to Coach Brown, um, you know, depth-wise, they, they don't go very deep. So if they get in foul trouble, um, you know, they, they, they could be in trouble. And, again, you mentioned it earlier that they are losing one of their starters. Ainsley Karen um, is out today. So that, that could be a key um, in this one. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Mark, maybe maybe also mention maybe uh, what else we have coming up here soon on East Main Sports Media. Yeah, this week we got um, – a couple games, as I mentioned a couple times, January 2nd, Tuesday, um, first game of the new year, be right here. The same Foscroft girls team will be hosting Herman, and on um, that will be um, a 6.30 start. And then um, on uh, Thursday night, uh, at Guilford, uh, PCHS girls team will host Skank, um, and that will be a 5.45 pregame that night. So join us for that. The week after that, we're here a couple times, Foscroft, Dexter, girls on the 8th, the boys on the 11th. Um, always exciting when those two schools get together um, so close to each other distance-wise that uh, um, it's, it's a little bit of a rivalry there. Yeah, and then uh, we get a chance actually in January as well to, to go to a place that we don't go too often and check out some Class D South schools in uh, at Valley in Bingham. Yeah, we're actually going, well, going there twice, um, but we're also going to Bucksport that same week, which um, we, we have never done a game at Bucksport. We've seen a Prescott Bucksport boys game in Pre- uh, Bucksport. CS Boy Girls game. So look forward to that. And the next day, um, you mentioned it, um, Valley and Forest Hills. Always uh, uh, speaking of rivalries, that place will be packed. That'll be a, that'll be quite an environment, won't it? Yes, it definitely will be. I'm looking forward to all that. All that's coming your way on East of Maine Sports Media. So stick with us for all that. We're uh, just about set here to get the the lineups. I don't believe we're gonna we're gonna do another national anthem since we did the boys one earlier. But probably not. Uh, but the probably last not, time we were yeah. here for this long day, they, they actually did. did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. yeah but whatever. Yeah. We're always good to hear that. But um, yeah. you know, we'll uh, you know get get you ready for this one. Just counting down the clock here. I don't know if they're gonna let it all run down here. Where you know, with a four game day, you're never really gonna start right on time. And we're about 20 minutes past what the original scheduled time was. But you're gonna get that when you have. Two JVs and two, two varsity games and going this afternoon. Mention that real quick. The two JV games are really close. Um, the two-point were. game and the uh, girls game that just finished, and the JV boys game was really close, too. And yeah. the varsity boys game was close until, um, you know, the third quarter. Um, they kind of pulled away a little bit, um, the, the Caribou Vikings on, in that one. So, um, yeah, quite a day here at Foscroft, and uh, this will end our coverage of 2023. It will. It will, indeed. We want to thank everybody at home for tuning in for this one. Should be a good one. And... Right now we're going to get the national, uh, sorry, we're going to get the lineups first. We'll see if we do an anthem after, and we'll be right back with you. Welcome to the campus of Foxcroft Academy for today's girls basketball game between the Caribou Vikings and your Foxcroft Academy Ponies. <laughs> Foxcroft Academy and Caribou are members of the Big East Basketball Conference, and we value sportsmanship. Please cheer positively for all the players involved, and we hope you enjoy today's game. Now let's meet the starters for this contest. First, for the visiting Vikings, number three, Brianna Levesque. Number 10, Liv Adams. Number 15, Madeline Dupre. Number 20, Amelia Coden. And number 22, Madeline Morrow. Caribou is coached by Kayla Brown and assisted by Sean Savage, Kenzie Worcester, and Cody Tompkins. And now for the starting lineups for your Foxcroft Academy Ponies. 
Number 10, Sam Ossifor. Number 12, Maddie Kimball. Number 25, Allie Smith. Number 30, Hallie Page. And number 41, Kirsten New. The poem is composed by Levi Ladd and assisted by Josh Kimball and Felicia Gaylord. The officials for today's game are Mr. Cowan and Mr. McCray. Now we ask that you all please rise and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. <laughs> Well, we got the uh, lineups taken care of and National Anthem and then get ready here for action here at Foxcroft Academy between the Ponies and the visiting Caribou Vikings. In case you missed the starting lineups, I'll run down the Caribou side. Number three, Brianna Levesque. Number 10, Liv Adams. Number 15, Madeline Defre. Number 20, Amelia Godin. And number 22, Madeline Morrow. How about for the Foxcroft side? Mark Scruff side, they got uh, senior Sam Osterfort, junior Madison Kimball, senior Ali Smith, senior Halle Page, and junior Kirsten Newt. We get ready to jump here. It'll be uh, Depre against Smith. Start things off, and we're underway here at Foxcroft. Controlled by the Ponies. That's Page with it. Looks like uh, Caribou comes out and uh, play to play here to start things off. And looks like a steal here. And that's one of the things she does well. That's number three. Levesque that went up with it and missed it. Rebound was knocked out of bounds and it's going to stay with the Vikings here. Levesque, uh, one of the leaders in the Big East in steals so far this year for the Caribou Vikings. Swing the ball around. They look for Depre. She wants three. That's off the back rim. No good. Rebound by Newt. Good job by Newt boxing out there. Comes Madison Kimball across the timeline with it. Just underway. Want to thank everybody for tuning in, watching this one. Madison Kimball off to Newt. She wants a jumper. It's no good. Allie Smith with the rebound. She puts it up. No good. Rebound comes away to Levesque, and here come the Vikings. They want to run. Levesque looks underneath, but that was a beautiful deflected pass there by Ossiport, who tipped it out. Yeah, one um, thing that Coach Brown kind of mentioned to us is they have difficulty with teams with size, and, and they got New and Smith out there to start the game. Let's see if Foster can take advantage of that. Sit here to Defre. She's guarded by Paige. She goes down the lane, kicks it off. Here's Morrow. Out to Levesque in the lane. Levesque scoop shot up and good. She's made things happen early. A basket, rebound, and a steal already for her. Now they're picking up full court. We're back with the first two of the game. See how Foxcroft handles this pressure. Yeah, and the they don't very well right there as Levesque got it. But that was that was caused by uh, Depre who tipped that. And then Levesque went in for a layup. So 4 nothing Vikings here. Good Page job there. Get awesome for it. Yep. Awesome port's got it. She wants to go to Smith. Takes one dribble. Goes up off the backboard. No good. Rebound comes down to Depre. And here come... 
Here comes Caribou again. Levesque, six points, all six points by Levesque so far. And it's Levesque, Levesque six, Foxcroft Mountain so far. Yeah, good stop for her. Page with it, looks to Smith, back to Page. Page blocked by Depray. Smith got the rebound. And there's the first two for the Ponies. Good job there by Allie Smith, staying with it. After the nice pass she made before that. Just over two minutes in. Four point lead for the Vikings. Here's Liv Adams. Hands it off to Levac. Liv Adams is one of the best rebounders in the Big East, Chris. Depre down the lane. There's her first two of the day. Beautiful move there by Madeline Depre. Tough to stop that. Ranked second in scoring and rebounding in the Big East so far this season. Austin Boy, it's tipped out by Depre, but it's going to stay with the Ponies. Comes our first sub of the game. Eddie Day coming in for uh, Austin Port. Eddie Day started the other night the game we were here against uh, John Baps. First one off the bench today. I'll tell you one thing, she's uh, we've mentioned this before a couple times, but um, she might, may, might not be big in stature, but I tell you what, she rebounds the ball. She, does. she can rebound the ball. Here's Day with it. She looks to Kimball. Kimball's been big coming back here for this team. Here's Hallie Page. Wants to go out to Newt. Looks for Day. Day looked back to Newt, was tipped away, and here come the Vikings. That's Morrow with the ball. Morrow in the corner to Levesque. Back to Depre. She wants three. Dials it up. Off the back rim. No good. Rebound comes down to Smith. Smith's third rebound already here in the first three minutes of this contest. Here come the ponies here. Down eight to two. 450 left first quarter. Here's Kimball. Looks to Newt, almost threw it away. Newt looks to Day, to Hallie Page, in the corner to Kimball. She thought about a three. Changes her mind, gives it over to Newt. Newt in the lane, and Levesque almost had another steal. She's everywhere the, um, early in this game, Chris. Yep, she certainly is. Making things happen out there, they'd say, Mark. They start, the, they start three juniors and one sophomore and one senior to the Vikings. And another junior, Karen, is not here. She usually starts. Yep. Kimball looks to Paige. Paige wants to go back to Kimball. Kimball's going to put it up. It's off the back room. No good. Newt got the rebound. Deflected away from her. Comes to the corner. A three-pointer by Day is no good. Long rebound comes to Levesque. She continues her start, but she stepped on the line, said the Mr. Official. So it's going to go right back to Foxcroft Academy. Good defense there by the Ponies forcing that turnover. we just got to get a good look. They haven't been able to get a good look because of this Vikings defense here early on. So we, uh, Kimball gives it into uh, Newt, goes back out to Day, to Smith at the foul line. Back over to Kimball. She again thought about a three. She goes in the lane instead, puts it up. It's off the back rim, and guess who on the rebound? Levesque. Levesque, pass. Up and good, lay up there by number 22, Morrow. Nice pass there by Levesque. Morrow gets her first two of the game. 10 to two lead, and they're gonna get uh, Depre with a foul here on the other end. And another thing too I wanted to mention, um, Morrow, she's the only senior on this squad, mm -hmm. so you're gonna be hearing from the, from the Vikings for a while. Yeah, yeah. Certainly are. Reminds me of uh, Ellsworth when they came in here and uh, most of the players were underclass. Here's Paige. She wants to go in the lane. Hits it off the backboard and in. Nice, nice shot there by Hallie Page. Page and uh, Kimball were big the other night in that close win over to uh, over John Baps, the first win of the season for the Ponies. Game you saw on Eastern Main Sports Media. Nice Tipped job. away. Nice steal there. That was Day. Off to Paige. Paige got a wide open layup, and it's good. And now it's 10 to 6, so a quick 4 four all run here by the Ponies. Yeah, we mentioned Day when she came in, and she already making things happen. A good steal there. Depre wants to go to the hole. She made it look easy, and that was good. Depre with four points. And what are we going to have here? Are we going to have uh, another foul on Depre? No, I think oh, it, was a warning? Warning. it was warning. a warning for being over the line when she was. Oh, okay, yep. yep. So the next one would be a technical if, gotcha. they, do, if they do that again. Yeah. It's nice that they give you a warning on that at least. Yeah. So that a couple games ago. Addison Coughlin uh, is in the game for the first time for the uh, Ponies. 
And that ball was picked off, and De Depre finds Levac. She went up no good, but Day tipped the rebound out of bounds, and it's going to stay with the Vikings. So Vikings causing a lot of pressure here in the backcourt here early on. Yes. Causing havoc here with the Ponies offense. Trouble advancing the ball over half court. Wide open way up there. Beautiful. And that's another another uh, basket for Depre. depre has got six. lebec has got six. Mm -hmm. 14 to six. Lebec has Vikings. three rebounds, two assists, and uh, steal already, too. Yeah. Yep. She uh, good start here for her. Here's Conklin. She transfer from Penquist, who unfortunately didn't have any girls basketball this year. So she's made the trip here to... Join the squad here at Foxcroft Academy. The words would be clear. She's not, she didn't transfer to Foxcroft. She, she still goes to Penguins. But just gotcha. <laughs> you transferred basketball teams, yeah. I guess, is kind of what I meant. But, yeah. Yeah. So she's been a nice piece to, to add and uh, been coming off the bench with the, for the Ponies here most of the season. Here's uh, Adams with it as Caribou gets possession again. That's number 20 into the game. That's uh, Amelia Godin that had the ball. And she went to Depre. I think Depre lost it off her foot. And they're going to say Pony's ball. 2-12 left here in the first quarter. See Coach Levi Ladd down there. And checking the action out firsthand. Another tip by Depre, but she tipped it out of bounds. Stays with the Ponies again. Yeah, this press really bothered the ponies early. Yeah, it's having trouble even getting it over half court. Here's Day, though. She's going to break it this time. Here's Paige. She's going to step back and fire a three. It's in and out. Ooh, that one almost went down. Conklin got the offensive rebound. I think Depre tipped it out again. I have another couple substitutions coming in here. Number four, Bryn Hamilton checking in for uh, Caribou. And that's Austin Port coming back in for Newt for Foxcroft. Now they're going to have the extra guy out there. Coach Lad probably hoping that can help with this. That press can help bit. with the press. Yeah, exactly. Here's uh, Austin Port. Looks into Smith. Tipped away. And here comes Depre. She looks ahead to Lebec. Lebec Started to go with it. Stops. Good job by Pony's defense getting back that time. Here's uh, Depre, though, as they she end up with a loose ball. She goes up, and she hits it. That's eight points for Depre. All of a sudden, she's the leading scorer, and the Vikings have a 10-point lead. Here's uh, Eddie Day to Hallie Page. She traveled with it. Having... Seems like everywhere they go with the ball, Caribou is right there in their face to cut them off. So that last game, um, when Caribou played Washington Academy, they, they put up 27 points in the first quarter. So starting quick is the thing. And the, the game against Ellsworth, where they ended up losing by 15, and they were ahead um, until the third quarter of that game. Ellsworth's depth was a little, little bit too much uh, at the end, but, yeah, but they uh, definitely battled with one of the best teams in Class B. Yeah, and I think uh, Ellsworth's depth is going to be trouble <laughs> for a lot of teams this year. Depre dials up a three. Page comes down with a, sorry, Smith comes down with a rebound. She got tied up, and it's going to stay possession arrow. is going to give it with the Vikings, so it's going to stay with the Vikings. And uh, thought maybe a sub, but guess not. But she's not coming in yet. Oh, now she is. That's going to be the freshman that you talked about earlier, Allie Cook. Saw her in parts of the JB game that we just watched. Minute seven left, first quarter. Adams to Hamilton. Hamilton was open. Yeah, I, just, I saw that. She, she would have just looked at the basket. She had a wide open shot. And uh, Lebec's going to get tied up. This time it's going to go over to the Ponies. Awesome foot. Very good defensive play, and she showed it right there. Stepping right in and forcing that jump ball. Another sub here coming in for the Ponies. That's Payson Hall checking in for Allie Smith. In very limited minutes the other night, she came in and got two quick blocks. Uh, she's definitely a force defensively is Payson Hall. She was another one that played in the JBE. Eddie Day with it. Ponies down by 10. Last minute of the first quarter. And Depre comes up with another steal and another basket. She's Ten in double digits now. 10 points, five steals or. 18-6, Vikings. 
Hey, looks to Austin for it. She wants three. Off the back rim, no good. Depre with the rebound. She's going to go to the basket and hand it off to her teammate, number 20, Amelia Godin, and she's going to get fouled, and she's going to go to the line and shoot two. Depre just sees the floor so well. I mean, you know, you get a 2 one one like that, somebody's going to get a layup or get fouled. I'm not sure if you can tell the, the camera or not, but um, Godin, the one shooting for Caribou, has a uh, what looks to be a neck brace on, and uh, I heard on the, on the broadcast that I was watching when they played that um, she uses it for concussions. Oh. Uh, something to do with concussions where her head doesn't snap back. Um, she gets one of two from the line there. That's a first two free throws by either team. Here's Hall with it. She's going to go up off the backboard. No good. Rebound team down to Hamilton for the Vikings. She's trapped at half court. And we're going to get a timeout. And so we're going to keep it right here. And... Uh, 7.7 .7 seconds remaining, and 19 to 6 is the score here. Yeah, Coach uh, Brown called that timeout just to avoid the turnover because uh, they were very close to getting a turnover. So good, good timeout by her. Owned and operated in Milo, McSorley Plumbing offers a variety of services to residential and commercial customers. New construction and remodels, open and opening and closing of seasonal camps and cottages, pump services and water treatments. McSorley Plumbing has always been a proud sponsor of youth high school sports. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rig service provider located in Herman, covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast direction, to modular home and communications equipment, call 977-BEAR today. I want to thank you to all of our sponsors who uh, make help these broadcasts possible. Here we're going to get another chance here with 7.7 .7 seconds left to add to their already 13-point lead. And right to the basket and the block there. And that's the way the first quarter is going to end. That's Hall again. We'll be back for the start of the second. End of one here at Foxcroft, and it's Caribou by 13. Back with you in a minute. We'll stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Brothers Meats is a family owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that's made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Back to Fox Crops Academy here. Welcome back to the start of the second quarter. Is Mark Caribou kind of used their pressure and kind of dominated that first quarter? Yeah, it started with Levesque. Um, you know, she had six quick points. Depre, um you know, kind of did the rest. So 10 points in uh, five steals, two rebounds, and an assist. Levac also has three rebounds, two assists. So both of them combined kind of led the way there for the Vikings in the first quarter. First possession of the second quarter. The Phonies have the ball. It's an awesome for it. Starts to go down the lane. Hands it off to Kimball right beyond the foul line. She shoots it. It's no good. Rebound's going to come down to Depre. Depre gets it ahead to Levac. And here come the Vikings. Levesque, beautiful pass underneath, and up with the shot there and getting fouled was number 10, Liv Adams. So she's going to have a chance to break into the scoring column for Caribou. She had mentioned her a little bit because she's in the top you know, 10 in the Big East rebound and keep pot to Coach Brown's squad. Keep her staying on the floor. When she stays on the floor, she's a tough matchup. He's out of foul trouble. Makes the first one and missed the second one as Kimball came down with the rebound for Foxcroft. Now the ball gets knocked around and Morrow comes out with it for Caribou. Morrow underneath to Levac off the backboard, up no good. On the rebound, there's Depre. Gets hit, puts it back up and in. Depre up to 12 points now and, and it's a 16 point lead here for Caribou. 
to the basket there goes Austin for it. And they're going to get a foul here, and I believe it might be against Adams or Caribou. It's going to give Austin Port a chance at the line. Number 20, Godin, they're going to get actually on the foul. This will be the first uh, free throws of the game for the Ponies. Yet to score here in the second quarter as it's been three points so far for the, on the Viking side. And that is a point for Austin Ford as she gets one or two from the line. With that trap, gets it off to Morrow though. And then Morrow tried to go to Adams, but she zigged and she thought she was going to zag. So <laughs> threw it out of bounds there. And Foxcroft will get another possession. Oh, intercepted pass there. And another basket for Depre. You can't make it so easy for a player like that. She got, she got 37 last game. She already got 14 in this game. Here come the ponies, though. And there's a block by Depre. You can add that to the, to the filling up the stat the, sheet. Yeah, to the filling six, up the stat sheet, yeah. To the six steals, five rebounds, and assists. Let's add a block to that crush. Why not? So the stat sheet's for, right? Fill it up. She does that well. Tony's inbounding here. Here's Hallie Page. She tried to go out to Addie Day, and here's another steal by Depre. She's going to be fouled. Good Real hustle by foul. Austin Port getting back, not, not letting that easy layup happen, but ooh, that, what, a, what a steal that was, number seven. So Austin for its first, uh, second team foul in this quarter for the Ponies. Uh, heard Coach Ladd over there saying, girls, we got to take care of the basketball. But it's been a lot about the, the Caribou defense, too. Uh, at the, on the same, you, you know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not, it's not that they're playing horrible, but it's just the pressure Caribou is uh, showing here has been very hard for Foxcroft to be able to do anything. There's a foul on the backcourt, though, on yeah, the Vikings. They kind of got bailed out there because they were close to a 10-second uh, 10 call. Yeah. So they're going to inbound back underneath their own basket. And Conklin will inbound it here for the Ponies. Looks today. She wants to go to Kimball. She's got some room. Tries to scoop it underneath to Austin for where that was picked off. And on the other end, Conklin comes up with a steal for the Ponies. Over to Austin Port. She wants to go to the basket. She loses it. Saves it in, though, to Kimball, who goes to Addie Day. Day over to Page. Pony slow it up a little bit. Here's Conklin. There's a short shot here by Page. It's no good. And rebound came down to Brent Hamilton for Caribou. Hamilton goes right up off the glass. No good. Rebound by Adams to Levesque tomorrow. Gives it off to Depre. Depre is going to get fouled. We uh, want to make a correction. Um, I got a message, and uh, the uh, one of the baskets um, early in the game was um, Golden, um, not Morrow. So Golden now has three points, and uh, Morrow's yet to score. Just wanted to. And we we like information like that. Um, don't hesitate to message um, message us. Um, you know. A lot going on up here, but we appreciate uh, you following, and uh, we'll take it to a uh, short break here. Your Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high-pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Back here to Foxcroft Academy as there's timeout, so we took it to a over to a commercial for you. And uh, it's been uh, all caribou so far here. It's, they got a 19-point lead with 533 and maybe talk about what Levi Ladd might be discussing over there in the huddle. 
Oklahoma taking care of the ball. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, they've got 10 steals on the team, eight by one player, but, but I mean, they, they've got 10 steals on the team. You know, yes, she's a great player, but also you need to take care of the ball. You need to be going to the middle on this press, and, and that's how you're going to be breaking it without turning it over so much. And I think, you know, it's, that's what they need to do. <laughs> yeah, Lebeck's looking to inbound, and she got called for five seconds. Couldn't find anybody open and didn't throw it in, so turnover and Tony's going to get an opportunity with the ball again. And, and I think the beginning of this game, Coach Ladd wanted to go with size because that's what Cable has trouble with, but this, this press is forcing it so they kind of need to go smaller. And, uh, you know, that's not really what you want to do against Caribou, but they're having a tough time with this press. Loose ball here tied up. It's going to go to Caribou. Foxcroft hasn't had very many clean looks at the basket either, and credit the Caribou defense for that. Here's a long pass by Lebeck that was stolen by Conklin. Another steal for Conklin. Here's Kimball. Kimball to Page. So ponies look to find some offense here. Down by 19. And tipped away, though, and here comes Depre. Depre is going to go right to the basket with it. Put it up. It's no good. Rebound by Page. Good defense by the Ponies getting back on that one. Here's Day. She's got an opening. Uh, she tries a bounce pass. That was intercepted by Caribou. Adams with it. Gets it off to Depre. Here come the Vikings. Depre beyond the foul line. Shot up to short. Lebec tried to save it in, but she stepped on the end line. So I think Page got a piece of that shot there. Yep. Yeah, it's not often that you would see Depre uh, airball well, a shot from that distance. Although nobody else saw that because <laughs> they didn't fast off the ball. So. Yep. Might be right, though. Good it's defense either way. She was in her in her, in her her face. Golden comes back in for Caribou, replacing Hamilton. Here's Day with it. She's got an opening there right down the middle, and she takes it this time, and she hits it. Sure nice there. move there. 26 to 9. There's some backcourt pressure again applied by Foxcroft, but broken easily by Carbo and a pass from Depre to Adams, and Adams with a wide open layup. Nice play there. It's tough when you go for the steal, I get it, but then you're leaving them, uh, you know, wide open. Uh, you know, they, they're going to have the numbers then. Here's Austinport. Four minutes to go in the first half. Austinport going to get fouled. Let's see if they call that shooting. I'm going to call it on the end line. She went up with it. Allie Smith getting ready to come back in for the Boxcroft Academy Ponies. She will replace Kimball. Kimball yet to score in this ball game. The ponies only have put up nine on the board so far. Here's Paige in the lane. Turnaround off the back rim. Rebound by Allie Smith, but I think she went over the back. Pushed a little bit. You're calling that? Fourth, uh, fourth foul on the Ponies this quarter. So any foul here the rest of the, this three minutes, 51 seconds, uh, Caribou will be shooting. Smith's first foul. There's Depre. She makes it look easy breaking that pressure. Oh. Gets it under to Lebec. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. Lebec gets two. She's got eight points. Ten. Three assists now. Conklin with it. Hands it off. Austin Point wants three, and she drilled it. Nice looking shot there by Sam Austin Point. I believe it's the first three pointer of the game for either team. Here's Lebet. That is correct. Morrow with it. 30 to 12. 3 10 left in the second quarter. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching this action here from Foxcroft Academy. Here's a loose ball that Austinport came up with. Day tripped as she went for the ball, and then Lebec stole it away. And then she got pushed by Austinport. And she'll be shooting, too. Yes, so it'll be five fouls again. Yep. It's good to see the officials, I think, are paying attention to the fouls here. And a lot of times in the JV games with the new rules, you have to have somebody from the scorer's mm -hmm. table actually kind of yell at them and be like, yeah, that's five fouls, so 
which it's going to be shooting. Which even needs to happen with the old rules. Cause yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, so yeah, it's, it's all new to everybody, but for sure. Even when it was one-on-one, -on -one, they had to tell them when they were in the bonus. But Yep. Here's the back of the free throw line. Short on the first one. The four for seven now line of the Vikings. Allie Cook and uh, Madison Kimball back in the game for the Ponies. Second one, no good. Allie Smith with the rebound for Foxcroft. Five rebounds now for Smith. She does a nice job on the glass for these Ponies. Smith with it. Turns. She got fouled, and I think they might have gotten so that's a Depp fourth with foul her first. on them. So th yep. they'll be in the bonus the rest of th this quarter as well. Actually, that's the second foul on Depray. So she doesn't want to pick up a third here in the first half because that could that would be huge if yeah, yeah. if they got her in foul trouble. Yeah. Here's a short shot in the lane. A nice looking shot there by Allie Cook, the freshman that we talked about earlier, Mark, and uh, she gets a two. Be a key player off the bench here for the Ponies. Depre, Adams. Back to Depre. In the corner to Labatt. Labatt and Depre have been big in this half. Really, the tempo was set by Labatt, though, from, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Morrow with it. She gets tied up, but they're going to call a foul on Addie Day. So and that's going to send him back to the line again. So obviously there's a comfortable lead right now for Caribou, but something to watch is if Depre get, gets her third foul... You know, you know, in the next two minutes, like, you know, could could change things a lot. Yeah, they'll look at the game in the second half for sure. If she gets another foul. Shot no good on the first one by Morrow. She's a lone senior on this team for the Vikings. Be looking to contend for a few years here in Class B. Rebound there by Depray. She got it. She went up and hit it. And she's got 18 points here in this first half. 32 to 14. Conklin. She wants three. That's off no good. Rebound came down to Morrow. She got... Hey, Cody's getting really aggressive here. Which is a good thing, but also they're in the bonus. So Blocked there by Ali Smith. Nice block by Smith that time on Depray. Here comes Addie Day to Conklin. Cross court to Kimball. Kimball wants three. In and out. Very close on that one. Rebound that down to the Vikings. Here comes Depre right through the lane. She's going to get fouled by Kimball. Depre's stats for right now, Chris. Ready? 18 points, and nine steals, seven rebounds, three assists, and a block. That's not a bad, that's, not, that's a half. Yes, yeah. That's not even a half, yeah, actually. That's, uh, yeah, still got a minute 25 left in the good week for most. second quarter. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's three for three from the line. Uh, no, she's also back-to-back -back, uh, Big East uh, uh, Play of the Week, too. Uh, she yes. Won, uh, two weeks ago, and then that. this past week, she was co Play of the Week with uh, Grace Jaffer. Two for two there at the line. Caden Garrett actually checked in as well for Caribou off the bench. First action she's seeing here this evening. Nice little shot there, and that's Allie Cook again. Quick four points off the bench there for uh, Allie Cook. 34-16, minute 10 left, first half. Here's Depray. Gives it to Garrett. Back to Depray. Jumper. Back rim. Could have called. They actually could have called uh, Depray there on trying to get the ball back after that missed shot. They didn't, though. Here's a three-pointer. No good. Rebound comes down to Morrow. Vikings have 45 seconds here. Let's see if they choose to kind of... I guess not. I was going to say see if they choose to, to uh, slow it down and look for look for one good one, but shot good. by Depre. It's, it's always a good one when she does ball in her hand. You know? Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that shot every time. Let's cook with it. Looks to Allie Smith. Over to... Kimball in the corner. Shot is no good. Came right to Cook in the lane, the loose ball bed. She missed it again. 
And here come the Vikings. 20 seconds left. Depre, Levac, Garrett, Depre, up, good. Oh no, uh, called the travel before the shot, I guess. I thought it was gonna be an N1 that time. So ponies have 14.8 seconds here. Well, yeah, I just mentioned that Golden for a minute. Um, you know, um, get a message here. And, uh, you know, it's been a long recovery for her. For her, she, for her, she wears that because um, she has a fifth fifth concussion. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank you for that information. Yeah. Thank you for that info. Definitely. I, I had only mentioned it because they had mentioned it on mm -hmm. a previous broadcast uh, that she wears that due to the concussion. But it, so. it's good that she's even uh, out here. And um, it's good to, yeah. see, good to see. Definitely is. Thank you for passing that along to us. Here's a shot from half court by Lebec. No good. That's the way first half's going to end. We'll be back with the halftime show right after these messages. Busy with places to go, things to do, people to see. Let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services, bill pay, Apple pay, mobile deposit, and more. We're as close as your phone. Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. Brothers Meats is a family owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. While you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that's made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Rowles Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Looking to keep your home safe and your lights on? Ideal Energy Solutions is fully licensed and insured to install new Generac generators for your home or business. We proudly handle all of your energy needs, from electrical work to HVAC and heat pumps. Our team is passionate about serving our local community, keeping our valued customers safe. Find us on Facebook or call Ideal Energy Solutions at 207-270-0242 for Maine's Ideal Service. My name is Rick Ames, and now we have an office in Dexter, which is what we consider our hometown now. We still have our office in Lincoln, and we're, we're loving that. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Call and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. To Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state-of-the-art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207-564-3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Busy with places to go, 
things to do, people to see. Let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services, bill pay, Apple pay, mobile deposit, and more. We're as close as your phone. Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. Looking to keep your home safe and your lights on? Ideal Energy Solutions is fully licensed and insured to install new Generac generators for your home or business. We proudly handle all of your energy needs, from electrical work to HVAC and heat pumps. Our team is passionate about serving our local community, keeping our valued customers safe. Find us on Facebook or call Ideal Energy Solutions at 207-270-0242. For Maine's Ideal Service. Welcome back to Foxcroft Academy here, and welcome into our Ideal Energy Solutions halftime show. Ideal Energy Solutions is an electrical contractor. They, all, they are also very good with modern solutions for heat pump installation and service, plus authorized dealers for Generac and licensed commercial and residential electricians. Ideal Energy Solutions is a heat pump residential registered vendor for efficiency of Maine. They are located at 25 North Street, Suite A in Dover Foxcroft. For more information, you can contact them via email at aidealsolution at gmail.com or call them at 207 270 0242. Maine Mapping Company provides all your land surveying and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine, centrally located in Dexter. Maine Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys as well as construction survey services statewide. Visit us at mainmappingco.com or check out our Facebook page to get more information and request a quote. Eli's Market, located at 54 Water Street in Guilford, offers full-service meat, produce, and deli departments. Eli's also offers additional services such as propane, rug doctor rentals, ice, and more. More information is available on their website at elismarkets.com. Again, thank you to all those sponsors, and thank you to Ideal Energy Solutions for sponsoring this halftime show. And Mark, maybe uh, talk a little bit about the first half. Maybe some of the some of the key contributors on each side. Well, we're going to start with Madeline Depre. Um, Twenty points, nine steals, seven rebounds, three assists, and one block. Just incredible. But let's uh, start to talk about Brianna Lebec. She set the tone to this game in the first quarter, getting six quick points. I'm also doing things, um, got three rebounds, two steals, and two assists. So she's also had a, had a solid half. Uh, rebounds, 17 for Caribou, 12 for Foscroft. Um, leading the way for Foscroft, Hallie Page with four, Sam Austin with four, and Allie Cook with four. Two each for Allie Smith and Addie Day. Um, for, for them, um, Ali Smith also has six rebounds, but it has been the turnover. We don't have the official stats for turnovers, but it's been the story of the game. I mean, mm -hmm. their defense, uh, Caribou's defense has forced the issue and, um, you know, set up a lot of these um, baskets for, for Depre. Yeah, and, you know, you expected Depre to do her thing. Um, she's going to get hers. Um, we expected that, but Levesque was huge at setting the tone early on in that first quarter. She certainly was. Um, you know, again, you know, you know who the other team is going to focus on stopping. She set the tone and said, we've got other players too, and um, you know, kind of proved that r right from the get-go. Um, and that's why they built up the 18-point lead. Um, in the second quarter, Foscroft definitely did uh, you know, play a much better quarter. Um, Carroll scored them, but only 15-10 to 10 in, the, in that quarter. So they definitely played a little bit better that, that quarter. And I think Coach Ladd in the locker room you know, kind of got to focus on that because you, you come out here and look at the scoreboard, you're going to be down. You know, you're going to be not, you know, not, not motivated as you should be. And, um, you know, you just got to focus on the positives, get better, get better every quarter, every day, and, uh, you know, go, go, from, go from there because that's all they can do. they got plenty of schedules left no matter how this game ends and plenty of games where they, they could win that could get them in the top 11 and in the tournament. Yeah, and, that's, and then on the other side, Caribou, you just, you just want to do the same thing you really did in, in the first half and create havoc for Foxcroft with that, with that full court court pressure yeah you don't want to change anything you did um you know um nobody in real foul trouble so no i mean depre has two um but but that's you know at this point that's you know starting the second half that's not really foul trouble so um you know so yeah i mean i'm sure coach brown wants to keep her you know squad doing what they're doing because they're doing it very well here and um you know it's kind of a 
big game for them too. They, they had a tough weekend last weekend, losing to um, Ellsworth, which a lot of people do, but also losing to MDI, which uh, Coach Brown said that's a tough matchup um, for them with their size. Um, you know, so it was big. They got a win over Washington Academy during, the, um, during this Christmas week, and they obviously building off that in this one today. Yeah, and we're uh, just getting set here for the third quarter here, and 18-point lead for Caribou, who looked very impressive there in that first half. I mean, it almost seemed like Coach Brown was concerned with, with the losing Ainsley Karen, and obviously you don't want to lose one of your starters or have them not playing today, but um, they didn't look effective in that first half. No, and then, you know, the five starters she put out there are obviously very solid, and, um, you know, so we'll see what happens in the second half, but... Um, you know, very, very impressive first 16 minutes from this Caribou Lady Vikings squad. Looks like um, they're going to come out with their start, as it looks like. Um, yeah, Godin, Morrow, Depre, Lebec, and Adams. Yep, five, they're five starters. And, um, yep, Kim, Kimball, Austin Fort Page. Um, Smith and Newt. Smith and, Smith and Newt. So, yeah, five, so five, five aside, same way we started the game. So see how it goes as we start the third quarter. Awesome port with it. Page over to Kimball. It's quiet in that first half. Didn't have any points. Free throw line. She looked to shoot it. Wanted to go into Newt. The ball was deflected away. And Morrow's going to get fouled by Newt. She came down with that one. Well, Newt's going to be called for a foul here. Her first. And Foxcroft's going to, rather Caribou's going to inbounds here near midcourt. Kind of tough one in the rest of the class B. And you see Ellsworth and Caribou with very few seniors on, on the team. You know? Oh, I know. I know. Both teams are going to be right there in the mix here for a few years. That's for sure. Depray lost it. Good hustle by Awesome Port. Awesome Port battling for it with Levesque on the floor. Tie up's going to give the possession. It's going to remain with Caribou. I love that hustle, though. This is a note, too. Neither team came out warmed up for the second half. <laughs> no, they didn't. I noticed that, too. You don't see that a lot of times where the teams just come back, go to their be bench immediately. Usually a little bit of a warm up, at least. Godin with it, looks into Adams. Adams underneath to Levac. No good. And here comes Hallie Page with it. From the ponies. Trying to really get into a more of an offensive flow here. And we'll see if uh, Caribou keeps up the press after the made baskets um, this, this half. Definitely worked New. very well for him. Yep. Intercepted there by Levac. She looks tomorrow, who's open, fakes up and good. That's a good, uh, good fake there by tomorrow. So we'll Levesque put her in the book now for two. Levac's got three assists. Huh? Steal there by Adams, and she traveled with it. Looks like she might have been pushed by Newt, but they're going to call travel on Adams. We're going to have Hamilton checking in tomorrow for the uh, Vikings. She got some key minutes early in that first half too. Kimball inbounding the ball for the Ponies. Three-pointer by Page. She might have been standing on the line. Smith got the rebound. She's tied up, and they're going to call a foul. That's a good job by Smith. Nice job to grab that ball. They're going to get Adams on the, on the foul. Her second. Both teams with one foul here in the third quarter. 6.34, so just, just about a minute and a half here into the third. Page. Awesome for it. has been no real easy shots for the ponies though tonight. No. Here's Kimball with a jumper. That's too long. Rebound came down to Hamilton. Hamilton gives it to Depre, and here come the Vikings. Depre in the corner. Adams. Shot up. No good. Rebound by Levac. Up off the backboard. No good, but Depre got the rebound. She's going to earn herself two shots. Depre um, is one steal, two rebounds. If she gets those, um, she will have a triple double event. Triple double, yeah. It's a very, pretty rare occurrence to see that. We saw a quadruple double earlier this season. Quadruple Mary, double, yeah. 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 yeah, that's even more rare. I don't see those too often at all. No. I don't no, think, I can't level. remember, I can't remember the last time I've seen a quadruple double at any level. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. 
you want to see it, go back and watch that tape. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yep. yep. Two shots there, good by Depre. Extends the lead out to 22 here for the Vikings. Six minutes left in the third quarter. Only four points this uh, half so far by the Vikings. Long three-pointer there by Austinport. And another rebound for Depre. Hamilton. Those cross over to Lebec, who's open. Her layup is no good. Good challenge there by New. She tied it up, and it's going to give the possession back to her team. I noticed about the Vikings, and, and not just that, right? The whole team, they, they see the floor very well, and if there's an open player, they'll find her. Yeah, they almost they almost uh, know, like, ahead of time where their teammate is. It's a very good, uh, very good sign for them. And uh, I believe they're going to be... Uh, a good challenger come uh, tournament time. Certainly. Page with a three-pointer, and that's good. Allie Page, I think. Oxcroft's got the only two three-pointers in the game. One by Austin Port and one by Page. She now has uh, seven points in the game. Here's Lebeck. Looks into Austin Port. She's going to go up. I'm sorry, not Austin Port. How could I, how could I, how could I get that wrong? That's Depre. <laughs> And Paige was good defense, but she did get her with the body. Um, you know, she got all ball up top, but she got her with the body a little bit, so she got her second foul. I think when a lot of people see see that too is they only see the ball and they don't see the body part of it. Well, a lot of time when you're watching on like TV too, that's what you see. So that's what you see is the ball. Yeah, exactly. So they think a lot of people think it's a clean block, but she's seven for seven from the line now. Just another stat to put on the line there. He almost jinxed her. Yeah, she's, Got she's that too one. good. She doesn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, 21-point lead. Five minutes, eight seconds left, third quarter. Good job by Kimball. Uh, almost got five seconds, but she um, threw it off uh, Hamilton's leg and we got the ball, kept, kept the ball. Austin Port. Here was kind of back off a little bit on the full court pressure. Yeah, it's more to more just pick it up your player. Yep. Page with a shot. No good. It got tipped around and came to Kimball. She's going to earn her sh two shots at the line. So chance to get into the scoring column for uh, Madison Kimball. As we kind of talked about her earlier, she's been a big piece to uh, Foxcroft's success. Coming, coming back. Shot no good. Their ponies are one for three from the line as a team. While the uh, bike is a 10 for 16 now. So Kimball's into the scoring column there. Their first point. And Caribou's double on the mop mark. 40 to 20. Golden shot, no good off. Adams with the rebound. Adams goes up against Smith. Nice little short hook there in the lane by Liv Adams. She's got five in the ball game. Yeah, the pressure's looking about. It's after a made basket. Yep. It was Austin Port though. They did a good job that time breaking the pressure. Austin Port looks over to Page. She goes down the lane. Looks to Newt. Her jumper is no good. Rebound by Levesque. Well, back looks ahead to Adams. Cutter, cutter, cutter. Oh, yeah. what, what a play. What a what a pass by Depre to a wide open Hamilton who completes the layup. But just as we had talked about earlier, with knowing where your teammates are. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with you on East Main Sports. My name is Rick Ames. And now we have an office in Dexter, which is what we consider our hometown now. We still have our office in Lincoln, and we're, we're loving that. We're looking forward to helping you naturally feel and be your very best. Welcome back here to Foxcroft Academy as Caribou has uh, extended their lead to 24 over the Ponies. And we were just talking 
how these Vikings seem to know right where the their teammates are, and it was almost like Depre knew she was there before she even got the ball. It was like a tip yeah. right to right to Hamilton. Yeah, she's um, so talented in all aspects of the game. Full court press here by Caribou. Again, a nice job that time by Foxcroft to dribble out of that. Day with it. Conklin with the three. That's short. Adams with the rebound. Depre. Beautiful little dribble there to go around Bay. Looks for Labac and now to Morrow. Over to Labac. She's open. But goes over to a wide open Hamilton. Her three is no good. Kimball came down with the rebound. Conies. Here comes to Allie Cook. She did a nice job off the bench. The freshman in the first half. She wants three. And she drilled it. Nice shot by Allie Cook. She has seven. She's but done she's, a super a nice job PCF off the, the bench. She's yeah. She's going to get the PCF points for the next um, three years after this one, too. There's Depre. Over to the back. Morrow. Hamilton. Back to Depre. That's Ooh, in her range. I thought she was going to shoot that. <laughs> yeah. Morrow wants three. No good. Conklin with the rebound for the Ponies. 44 23, 245 left third quarter. Another three pointer that time by Cook is short. Rebound came down to actually Adams, but controlled by Depre. Morrow looks to Depre. Oh, she finds Hamilton back to the top. Adams is open. Morrow, Hamilton. Boy, they move the they ball around so they well. They got a player down. They, oh, they couldn't boy. stop it. They, I think they were trying to follow up. Oh, and that's Allie Cook, too. Who's hurt for the ponies, and we'll keep it right here during this timeout. And, uh, I don't think we're going to have a timeout here. I think just going to no put a okay. sub in, I think. Okay. Chris, what are you kind of looking forward to here in January coming up with the schedule? I, I, I know I'm looking forward to go, going to a couple places we haven't been, Les Valley and Bucksport. Yeah. Um, and, and kind of looking forward to that. Back-to-back -back days, actually. Martin Luther King Day and the next day. We'll be at Bucksport on the on the um, Martin Luther King Day, the 15th, as uh, seen a Bucksport Press Guy, boys in the press, uh, Bucksport, CS Sport Girls. The next day, Valley and Forest Hills, something we haven't had on our airways, and that should be exciting. That should definitely be exciting. I, I have been to Valley once. Uh, my daughter played high school basketball for um, in high school and they had a game at Valley. I, I've been there one time. It's a cool little neat little gym and a, a good atmosphere. They're gonna set us so up I'm on looking stage. forward to that. Yeah. They're going to set us right up on stage. Oh good. Good. We'll be on the stage huh, for that night. Let's pass the day to New. Goes out of bounds and it's going to go back to the Vikings. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. Looking forward to, you know, Bucksport. And also, um, PCHS boys right now, 4-0. They haven't played a game for like two weeks, but they're, they've been exciting. We'll be, uh, um, the, the next game's next Saturday, actually, against George Stevens, a tough one. But then they play them at home, home a few weeks after that, and we'll have that one up for you. Short jumper there by Depp, right? No good. Conklin with the rebound. And yeah, I think Conklin got fouled. Good job by Conklin, battle on there. Yep. You know, a lot of people think that uh, George Stevens could, <laughs> should be one of the contenders there in Class C North for mm -hmm. boys. There's a few. That um, seems like a seems like a kind of a wide open kind yeah, of field, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, Fort Kent, Machias, they're they're tough. But um, you know, a lot of those teams in Class C don't see each other during the season, so it's tough to see how they match up. Really, it's so weird to say Machias in Class C though. Yeah, I mean, very they, weird. They, they boys and girls team are doing pretty well here, but I you know I do expect the boys team to make a you know kind of. Be a threat come uh, tournament time. And uh, and very also excited. Also, got Madden um, Brian McDormand has won a state championship before, and you know, as a coach, and, he, and he's know, got them playing well yes, early. And, uh, so, and um, you know, a lot of um. times, uh, you know, a, a good coach. You know, a lot, we got a lot of good coaches, but a good coach can win you a game come tournament time. You know? Yep, definitely, definitely so. And uh, I am definitely uh, excited for those trips to go to those places that we don't get a chance to see and. You're really talking up uh, the Valley Girls team. I'm kind of really They're excited to see that. They're yeah. Oh, and uh, play Horse, Barry horse, well. horse, Hills and Valley. Actually, Valley boys ought to be good too. Yeah. Yeah. We'll actually have Valley three times. We've got the two games there against the uh, Forest Hills and PCHS, and also when they're at Guilford. So. Yeah. Nice move in the paint there by Adams for two points. She's up to seven. You know, so they got three players with at least seven points. Depray with 27. 
26 point lead here for the Vikings. They're in the final minute of the third quarter. Kimball in the lane. It's going to get bumped. That's a fifth, too, so she'll be shooting. Yep. I think it might have been a shooting foul, anyways. But Kimball's going to get a chance back at the line for the ponies. She's one for two. They're, they're two for four as a team. That's 50%. <laughs> it is. Yep. Yes, uh, math expert is on the broadcast, <laughs> play by play tonight. <laughs> That's 66.7 now. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry, they're, they're for her, but they're three for five of the team, so 60%. <laughs> Kimball will try to make it two for two as Depre checks out. See if we see her at all the rest of the way. Back rim, no good. Rebound to Adams. That was a six rebound. She has, again, she's one of the top rebounders in the Big East. Hamilton looks down to Adams. All support went down. She handed it back to Hamilton. Hamilton makes the basket. Give the assist to number 10 for Caribou, Adams. 30 seconds left now in the quarter. Nope. Left, oh, difficult shot left hand. And Hamilton came down with the rebound. Here's Morrow. 20 seconds. A lot of time to the post game, but stay with us because we're hoping to get Coach Brown and, and Madeline uh, Depray. Talk to Chris Lesson. Oh. That's always a pleasure for anybody, Chris. <laughs> I'm sure they're looking forward to that. Yeah, they, don't, <laughs> they don't know yet. <laughs> Turn over there, gives the ball back, gives Spotscroft another chance here at the end of the quarter. We're under 10 seconds, though. They're going to have to hurry. Kimball. Kimball, do they know how much time there is? Now they do. And by then, it's too late. That's the end of the third quarter. 51 for Caribou and 24 for Foxcroft. Be back with the fourth in a minute. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Looking to keep your home safe and your lights on? Ideal Energy Solutions is fully licensed and insured to install new Generac generators for your home or business. We proudly handle all of your energy needs, from electrical work to HVAC and heat pumps. Our team is passionate about serving our local community, keeping our valued customers safe. Find us on Facebook or call Ideal Energy Solutions at 207-270-0242. For Maine's Ideal Service. Back to Fox Soft Academy as we get set here to start the fourth quarter with Caribou comfortably in front of the Fox Soft Academy ponies. And just as we were talking about it in the break, Madeline Depre is back out there for the Vikings to start the fourth quarter mark. I'm sure none of them know this over here, but by our set, she's one rebound and one steal away from uh, that triple double. Six or six, but that's She one. wants a long three there. Ooh. Nothing but Nylon. Nice. Beautiful shot there. That's 30 points for Depre. I think she might be up for play of the week for the third straight week. I can't imagine anybody doing better than she has this week. We'll call Nude on the foul there. Depre came down with it. We also talked, you know, come to tournament. Obviously, you know, everybody's favorite Ellsworth, Old Town Caribou right behind them. But when you got a player like that, that makes you a threat to, you know, in, in any game. Because, um, you know, you're the best player, or at least close to it, every time you step on the floor. Turned it over there. A little miscommunication between Depre and Morrow. And it's always exciting into the tournament time, seeing a player like that go up against, you know, yeah. an Ellsworth or Old Town, you know. And they did pretty well against uh, Ellsworth until uh, Ellsworth pulled away, like they do against many teams, right? Yeah, so their depth is, is what causes so many problems for other teams facing them. And uh, really, Depre is not only one of the top players in Class B or Big East Conference, she's, I dare to say, one of the better players in the state uh, yeah. as far as on the girls' side. Yeah, so. we got about it. Conklin stolen by LeBeck. LeBeck adds another one to the stat sheet. Mora to Depra. She thought about it. 
Godin says, I'll take it. And make it. And the assist goes to Depre on a three-pointer by Godin. And they keep adding on to the lead here. 33-point lead here for the Caribou Vikings, who look to be on their way to their fifth win of the season. Godin with the rebound for Caribou. Now to Depre. She looks over to Levesque. Levesque's been open on that wing. She just doesn't shoot it. Underneath, the assist goes to Depre. Adams with a basket and a chance for a three-point play. It's kind of a joking about needing six more assists for a triple-double, but if you just get two, then like a 30-second span. <laughs> Job there, Peace and Hall coming in for the Ponies, replacing Newt. We're going to have 14 Garrett's. Caden Garrett coming in for the Caribou Vikings as Morrow goes to the bench. Adams tries to complete a three-point play, and she does. And she's on double figures. Ten. So all kinds of good things happening for Caribou today. Foxcroft, the ball. And today, I'm going to call it, I guess Levi Ladd wants a timeout. We'll just keep it right no, here. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's Caribou called the timeout because, no, uh, well, it looks like he, yeah, it was just weird because. Uh, they, think, asked, they asked Coach Ladd what, what he wanted, a full or uh, 30, so I guess that was a timeout by him. Yeah, but Yeah, but um, yeah it's just, a, just quite a performance here um, by this whole squad, and uh, I'm going to kind of tell you about some of the other, um, all of our sponsors uh, that we have here. Um, thank you to uh, Sluggers, Heron Brothers, Ames, Chir Ames Chiropractic, uh, Riles Garage, Kimball's Insurance, Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union, Ide Ideal Energy Solutions, um, and, uh, sorry, Black Bear Crane, uh, Main Mapping Company, uh, McSorley Plumbing, Eli's Market, uh, Ideal Energy Sports, um, partnership with them also. Thank you to all our sponsors. If you want to sponsor any or all of our games, please contact me, Mark, at EastMainSports at gmail.com. You can sponsor by the game or all of the games. Also, hit the join button right, right under this um, broadcast on YouTube. Um, your chance to win um, items and uh, coming up, and um, also you can become a member on Facebook. Um, we almost up to 21,000 um, followers, and you can also become a member on there too. Appreciate all the support that we um, have um, from all the followers, sponsors, everybody that uh, contributes to also. So it's Pony's Ball. Conklin inbounding up to Day. Looks to Hall. Back today, she wants a three-pointer, and she hit it. Three-pointer there by Addie Day. Five points for her on the afternoon, evening, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's dark outside, so probably have to say evening. So after 6 p.m., so I guess we can call it evening, Chris. Yep, yep. Look, it's dark at, what, like 4 o'clock now, so. Yeah. Looks like it's going to be a sweep for Caribou, at least on the varsity side. The boys won earlier over Foxcroft. I believe that was a 20-point a win for Caribou. There's another three-pointer on the other side of the court here by the Ponies by Austin. Court. That was no good. Day got the rebound. She got fouled. And Day's going to get a chance to the line. That's her first trip to the line today. Yeah. Fight in this Foxcroft team. I mean, obviously, early in the game, it was you know kind of clear that you know Caribou was dominating with Levac and, and, and Depray, but you know they they've kept battling and uh, another big game for them coming up on Tuesday against the you know a game where maybe they're a little bit more evenly matched. That one will be against Herman, correct? Yes. On Tuesday, yep. And we'll have that one. Mark will have that one. Short on the free throw, rebound to Garrett. To hands it off to the back. So some of the starters out here. Well, four out of the five starters still on the floor for Caribou. Oh, that probably she wanted to take a jumper there and she traveled with it. Turn it back over here to Oxcroft as we got five and a half minutes left. Which has been a uh, 
quite an afternoon of basketball here. A long, long afternoon of basketball. Foxcroft Academy. Madison Kimball looks out on the wing and the pass was out of the reach of Austin Fort. And Hallie Page getting ready to check back in for Foxcroft. And she's going to replace Madison Kimball, who did a good job today. She got she got two points and kind of quiet on the, on the point side of it. But um, again, a key piece that Foxcroft needs if they want to have any chance at, at uh at a playoff down the road. Garrett goes up, got her own rebound, goes back up and in. Garrett. She's in the book now. Yep, she's in the book as well. I believe they have seven players in the in the scorebook. It's been an impressive That's effort here by yeah, Caribou. Is correct. Conklin shot short, rebound to Depre. That's her tenth rebound. Depre, Adams. Adams spins. Up and good. Nice little shot there by Adams. That sophomore is kind of an under the radar player for the Vikings. She really is. She's a. Uh, she's up to 12 points. Yep. Yeah. Six rebounds. Seven rebounds. She's averaging around seven rebounds. Just under four and a half minutes left. Three pointer by Page is short. Defray with the rebound. Looks ahead to Adams. Looks to Depre. Depre, beautiful pass to Levesque. I don't know if Levesque was ready for it, and the ball got turned over. Addie Day. Good shot, beautiful looking little shot there by Addie Day. She does a nice job for this uh, Ponies Club. Leading scorer today now with eight for the Ponies. Direct blocked by Payson Hall. Got it back, but it was stolen by Austin for it. Austin Port wants to go in the lane. Well, kind of scoop there. And it's going to get tied up. It's going to be Foxcroft possession. Allie Smith is checking in for the Ponies, as well as Alexis Hirtakis checking in for Foxcroft Academy. Number 13, Shayla Cerulli, also into the game for Foxcroft. Confusing who's going out, but Day's going out. Shot there by Page. See Rebound Eric, to. <laughs> you see uh, Eric Ogden over there. You can look for his photos uh, whenever he gets them posted this weekend. He's had a lot of these area games in this area. Well, uh, and also, uh, he told us about a game this afternoon that he went to a, uh, a central one point win and a close game all the way through. And uh, Hankers had a chance to tie it late. They got followed on three point and they made two out of three. So busy day for him, just like it has been for us. Allie Smith got her own rebound, missed it, tipped around. It was tipped out of bounds, and it's going to go over to Caribou as they start using more of their bench now. It's number 21, Jocelyn Griffith into the game for Caribou. I'm actually a little surprised that uh, Depre is still in the game for Caribou at this point, or some of their starters to start using some of the bench on the other side as well. Nice shot there by Depre. She had to two 32 points. Two more for her. So really looks underneath to Allie Smith. Allie Smith's got two. She's got four points in the afternoon for the Ponies. I think they're going to start getting some of these starters out of here for Caribou now. So back attempts a three. That was rebounded underneath there by Griffith. She got fouled. We have a couple more subs coming in for the Vikings. Griffith is going to get a chance to get into the scorebook for Caribou. Shot no good. Old new team coming in. Yep. Yeah. Number 12, Gracie Rosignald. Number 11. Well, do you have an 11 on your roster? Yeah, Megan Martin. 
Mega Mine, okay. Get that one. Mm, Hamilton's back in also. Yep. Here, Takas with the rebound for the Ponies. So, 0 of 2 for the line there for Griffith. Shot no good. Rebound, Payson Hall. And there's two for Payson Hall. A minute 50 remaining. Hamilton. Lost it. Hallie Smith's got it up to Hallie Page. She wanted to go with it, but she lost control. Here, Takis. Cerule. Page. Down to a minute 30. Hall. Off the glass. Nice little move there. Nice job. Coming into the game by Payson Hall. I was talking about just to get the sub in. Isn't it? Just to get the sub in. Um, yep. yep. Our uh, cameraman, Joe, is going to go over after the game and get uh, Madeline Depre and Coach Caleb Brown for us. They only had, I think they only had one more sub left on their bench. I think it's 25, Lily McCrossan. Be the final uh, substitution, I believe, for the uh, Caribou Vikings. As they are going to improve She's the five the and three. Only freshman on the squad. Freshman, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Actually, what you know, seeing what we saw from some of the JV, like they have a very promising program. Yeah. Like yeah. years to come, they have some promising kids even on the JV squad that we saw earlier. They certainly do. <coughs> Good program that they built in Caribou for sure on the boys and the girls side. Boys were down for a couple of years, but they've started to build back up again. Yeah, Coach uh, Corrigan is a great coach. Um, you know, he won a state championship for them, and, uh, you know, he's uh, got this program heading in the right direction. One thing we saw today, I think we knew, you know, had to run with them. Yes, <laughs> yes, you don't want to run with them. No, no. Um, but that's the type of team that I, I mean, I, I could see the team like that beating Ellsworth or r and or anybody, really. Yeah, and you got to remember, you know, we're – just coming up on close to halfway through the season. A lot of these teams, you know, they, they just get into shape, like what their rotation is and a lot of other things. So, yep. you know, they're going to look different come February. Just, too, just, just kind of getting warmed up, really, when you start getting yeah. warmed up. Yeah. We are, too. we got plenty of broadcasts left coming up. You want to become a sponsor, you let me know, and we can get you hooked up. So good rebound um, week for, um, you know, Caribou after uh, a tough uh, weekend last weekend. Yep, and bounced back nicely. In the you watch the academy, and now um, going to get a win today. Oh, I have a foul, looks like, on the shot. I don't know if it's... It, oh. after the shot. Yeah, after the shot, okay. I'm going to be on the other line then. Oh, 47.9 seconds left. You know, I think if you're the opponent, you're trying to just take the positive, you, you, you know, you... Went through stretches where he didn't play as poorly, um, you know, and kind of take those and go into the next game and try to get a win on Tuesday. Here, Takis looks under the hall. He's going to go up and get fouled by McCrossin, so That's, nice Payson, job. Payson Hall is a, a solid freshman, you know, for them. I mean, with her and, um, you know, Cook the next few years, they, you know, that's promising for them. Oh, definitely. Definitely. But um, both players have defi definite potential. I'm hoping, uh, Allie Cook didn't get hurt too badly there earlier. She left the game with an injury. She's kind of sitting down at the end of the bench right now, but we hope she starts to get a little better soon. Well, he's got 12 points this quarter, so definitely um, improving every quarter. Got tipped around here. Takis with it. Tried to go back to Hall. That was intercepted by McCrossin. Just over 30 seconds left. Page comes up with a steal. Page has got a wide open lane, and she puts it up and in. Nice basket there by Hallie Page. She's got nine points. 30-point lead, and I don't going to be really in that interested in shooting here the rest of the way. But some of these kids probably uh, don't get the opportunity to shoot much, so I wouldn't be surprised. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Cross like it doesn't look like they're going to, though. But doesn't look interested. So the final is going to be 68-38. to Caribou is going to get their fifth win of the season. Yeah. We'll be right back with the post-game show uh, right after this. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. 
Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. My name is Rick Ames, and now we have an office in Dexter, which is what we consider our hometown now. We still have our office in Lincoln, and we're, we're loving that. We're looking forward to helping you naturally feel and be your very best. Go and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Brothers Meats is a family owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky. Back to Foxcroft Academy. Caribou picks up a 68-38 win over Foxcroft Academy. Uh, we're standing here with Madeline Depre and... Uh, Boy, you guys started kind of quick. Actually, uh, Brianna really kind of sparked that early on. Just kind of talk about the game today. Uh, we've been struggling with coming out strong and prepared for our games. We usually have a really slow first quarter, so that's something we've been trying to figure out is how we can come out strong. And I think we really did that today. Yeah, you guys are really starting to, you know, I've seen a few of your games online and stuff like that. You guys are really starting to look like you're getting into a better offensive flow at least the last few games. Yeah, that uh, Ellsworth MDI. Both those losses were tough for us, so we all decided it's time to really work hard at practice and take it yeah, seriously. Yeah, and those are yeah. tough Class B teams, so oh, yeah. that's definitely, I mean, you guys know where you guys want to be come February. And, yeah, 100%. And in Bangor for sure, and yeah. um, so it's just really about improving for you guys. I mean, what are you, what are you looking forward to next now that you got the win here today? Whatever our next game is, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, how hard is it, though, sometimes because you know that other teams are going to focus on you? And, and, and you guys you guys do a really good job of knowing where each other are, it looks like, yeah. on the court, too. Um, something that I really wanted to get better on the off season was trying to make the players around me better. So getting better court vision and just making better passes, that's something I wanted to improve in the off season. And I think we're starting to get better playing with each other, knowing where each other are, like just stuff like that. It's, it's better the more you play together, you know? Well, congratulations on the Thank win, you. and hopefully see you down the line. Thank you. you. Hand it over to Coach now. Thank you. I'm going to talk with Coach Brown here. and Coach, you guys, uh, you know, got, got off to a quick start. Really, Brianna was the one that really kind of sparked that early run, and guys kind of just kind of run away with it the rest of the way. Yeah, for sure. We were looking to play fast pace, and uh, Bree did a good job getting us started, and Madeline did a really good job today finding the open man, and um, I want to emphasize the assist part of that. I just asked him, how many assists did she have? Because I thought she had a really good game finding her teammates and, and uh, moving the ball. It's actually one of the things we talked about in the broadcast is a lot of the girls on the team seem to know where each other are all the time. Like that pass that she made, Depre made, under the basket to Hamilton for the layup, it's almost like she passed it before she even got it because she knows where she was. I appreciate that. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> it doesn't always work that way, but um, when it does, it sure looks good. Last couple games I've seen you guys play, you guys look like you've gotten into a better offensive flow, though. Last couple games. Yep, we, we did today for sure. Um, we've, we've struggled a little bit early on, and hopefully we can continue on the progress there and continue to find success. What are you, what are you looking forward to next? What do you, what do you want to see going, going forward for your next game? Uh, kind of like you just said there, those are were, those were the things we're working on, right? Passing the ball, moving the ball, um, finding the open man. You said it looks like we know where each other are. You know, that's that's important to us too. Um, he commented on our passing, and that's been a big emphasis for us as well. So those are the things that we're working on, and hopefully we can 
take today's game and move forward and, and continue to find success with those things as well. Yeah, the good play was definitely very noticeable today by us here on the broadcast. We want to thank you for taking a couple minutes with us. Hope to see you. I hope to see you in Bangor in February. Appreciate Be good. that. I hope so too. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on our broadcast. And uh, that's going to wrap it up from Foxcroft Academy. Final score once again, Caribou 68, Foxcroft 38. Have a good evening.